Hey there, my gorgeous amigos on the internet, and welcome to the Devet channel. I know, I know a bit of Spanish. I have a few tricks up my sleeve. This is not just a coding channel. See, si, that's a popular one. Si, señorita. Si, señor. So about an hour or two ago, I made a community post on YouTube asking people to send me some questions in, programming questions. And I haven't done one of those in a long time, so I got really excited to start setting up my camera, put up the lights, and the first comment came through, and it was about making a video about testing code. Unbelievable. Get a life. It ruined my day. It ruined my whole mood to make that video. <laughs> so I thought I'd do something else. So he's to blame for it. Find him. So I had this great idea to make a video about the history of web development. So the first websites were just text-based with hyperlinks on them that would take you to different parts of the website or to another website entirely. So you could see why it was quite boring. The, the requirements to become a web developer were just literally be able to type on a keyboard. That's it. And then the revolution happened in 1992. Images. Wow. Images were posted on the internet and everyone went crazy. And the one guy that posted his picture of his genitals was struggling to get it deleted. It's off my computer. Why is it still on the screen? And then in 1994, a huge popular browser came out called Netscape, which was, I guess the idea was that you escape the net. But wouldn't you want people to be on the internet if you're the browser? Shouldn't it be Lifescape? So you go on Netscape? Unbelievable, these people. So this browser basically introduced a bunch of features like uh, GIFs, so animating pictures basically, pictures, text, all of that good stuff, and tables. You could do tables. That was insanity. You would, if you'd work as a developer, you would literally put food on the table using tables. You would, you would use tables as a developer to put food on the table. Okay. The problem was though that in 1995, like you could put text and images already on the screen, but there was no way for you to position them in nice ways. You just dump everything on the screen and it would look terrible, absolutely terrible. So then this one guy had this great idea to use tables to put the content in and make different size tables to give spacing and stuff like that. So it was a great idea. This year also JavaScript was introduced, which basically adds interactivity to your web pages. In 1996, CSS1 was introduced, which basically allowed you to add style to your content. So if you wanted to make a button red, if you wanted to make a font bigger or add spacing, you could do that. But people were still using tables to manage and organize their content. I guess the tables have turned, but not overturned. I don't know what that means. And JavaScript was also getting quite popular, which is really crazy the amount of things you can do with JavaScript. You can literally build out a shop online, add interactivity animations. People used it to make fireworks and snow effects. The year 2000 marks a revolution in web development, which is probably one of my favorite eras. Uh, in web development when Flash was introduced and you, you you were able to make Flash games and animated content and you get these wacky games coming out and wacky websites. It was, it was, I have absolutely nothing against this period. It was really fun. The year 2003 marks a revolution in web development. That's when WordPress was introduced, which allowed basic human beings to type something out and then they'd have the content on the screen in a very user-friendly way. So you'd see the rise of blogs everywhere. The one I followed the most was about Spanish. It taught me very well. Si, senorita. Si, senor. So here's something fun that you probably didn't know. CSS Grid actually came out before Flexbox. It came out in 2007, but it wasn't really widely adopted by the internet. And um, we went to Flexbox, which was a huge upgrade from tables because again, tables were never intended to be used for positioning stuff. Tables are tables, flexes are flexes. So we had this great idea of having content 
and add a display flex to it and it would put everything horizontally. Now, why would you want to do that? Well, you could group contents together. So if you have a batch of content here, then you have a batch of content here, it would all go down vertically. But if you add a flex direction flex to the middle one, it would go horizontally. So you'd have this leeway of doing cool stuff. And then with that, you could add like justify content space between and depending on the screen size, it would adjust. What have we done? What have we done? So in 2012, media queries were born, which basically allowed you to resize websites for other devices. Because remember, we had the rise of smartphones um, and like iPhones, but all websites were originally made for the desktop computer. So when you viewed it, it was so small that you couldn't see anything on it. You'd have to zoom in. Spanish course for beginners. $200. I cannot afford this. I need to sell something. You sold your soul. 2015 was probably one of the biggest, most monumental moments in the web development scene. It's when Flash officially died. Flash was heavy um, and it was slow and HTML5 was widely adopted, YouTube being one of the bigger companies. So you could just go in your modern browser, and remember, iPhones uh, did not have Flash, um, so you could finally watch YouTube videos there, but it would be performant and lightweight, uh, which was huge. This is the time where minimalistic design was also introduced, so everything else started looking quite neat, quite professional, and quite clean. And that's kind of where we are now. We started widely adopting JavaScript as well, uh, and creating all these different frameworks that allows us to build these complex web applications, um, these crazy 3D stuff in the browser. You see social medias now, uh, you see um, e-commerce websites that person, that people do. And, you know, it's not perfect. There's still a lot of problems but at the same time, do you really want to wake up every day and say, oh, there's a problem with this framework, there's a problem with this. But there's always going to be problems. It's what you want to do. And for me, I'm very excited about the future and the future of web development. So that motivates me enough to keep doing what I'm doing. Anyway, I don't know what I'm talking about. So I'm going to leave you with that. Lesson is future is exciting and you should be too. Thank you so much for watching. Check out the courses on developedbyad.com. They're great. I heard great things about them, so buy it, which also supports the channel and puts, puts the table on my food. And I'll see you in the next one.